Hello and welcome to Tea and New Book Tuesday. I'm Lisa. I'll be your librarian today. I'm just so happy everything's working. And maybe if I'm happy and grateful, it will continue to work. Ah, maybe? Okay, so Tea and New Book Tuesday, as you know, is our show where we discuss books that have been pre-ordered by Mobile Public Library, many of whom will be, many of which <laughs> will arrive and be available to check out, in some cases, on their release date. Not all of them, mind you, but some of them. Therefore, you can put them on hold now because they're already in the catalog. So I'm going to preview romance and historical fiction that are coming in April today. Uh, but first, we're going to talk about other things. First, let's talk about my tea for Tea and New Book Tuesday. Same. I've got it in my MPL cup. Today, I am drinking... Uh, first of all, I must be a little tired because I'm also having myself a Dr. Pepper. But my tea, to keep the caffeine from overwhelming me, is Tazzo's Elderberry Blackberry Tea. This is a new one I just tried and I, I like it. It's caffeine free. It's another herbal. Um, I don't like it as the mint juniper berry one that I absolutely love. Uh, but it's a nice alternative. And it turns out red, which I don't think I can show you, but... I always find that weird when a tea turns out red when you brew it. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about what's coming up at Mobile Public Library. We have a ton of events coming up because we're finally able to do events again, um, including a costume contest or a Cats in Costumes art contest at West Regional uh, beginning yesterday. Children and teens are invited to stop by the youth desk at West Regional to pick up pre-printed sketch outlines of a cat that they can use as the basis for their cats in costumes creation. Uh, the completed artwork should be turned into the same place you picked it up from the youth desk at West for inclusion in a special exhibit that will run through April 30th and will run alongside Eugene Walters on artwork. So that's fun. We also have a painted wooden cat in tutu board with like the face missing. So you can bring your kids down and take a picture in that. That was created by artist Jamie Lee. That's in, again, the children's department at West Regional. So all of that's good and fun. And that will be going on the end of March all through April. So I will have more previews coming in the coming weeks because more stuff is happening. Stuff finally gets to happen. All right, what I've been reading, I am still in Pride and Prejudice. I think I'm going to finish really soon. I am flying through it. I don't get to sit down and read every day, just the way my schedule is, but I'm at the point where, without spoiling the plot too much, Lydia is now married. That's where I am. So that whole rigmarole has happened and we're reaching the end game I think I'm in the, the final chapters so I will probably finish today or tomorrow and next up I might I've gotten an early copy of Randy Rainbow's autobiography which is called playing with myself because of course he called it that <laughs> so I will probably read that next and in today's stream we're going to talk about romance and historical fiction we don't have a ton of it. We have, I mean, there's definitely some, but, uh, but it, yeah, I, I narrowed it down to the stuff that's critically acclaimed, but there is more coming out than I'm able to preview here. So if your favorite author isn't listed, then go ahead and search it in our catalog because they may have a new book coming out. It's a lot of stuff coming out. All right. But now your favorite part of Tia New Book Tuesday and mine, the giveaway. All right. Get to give it given away. First up is a book I've given away before, which is Antoinette's Sister by Diana Giovinazzi. All of the giveaways are going to be on the giveaway Google form, which should be, there should be a link in the description. I will add it again to the comments of this video as soon as the video is over. Weirdly, I can't do it while I'm doing the video. I don't know why. Anyway, uh, so go ahead, go on there and choose one of these four, only one, and you'll be entered to win that one. There's also one uh, leftover book if you're interested in that. I don't think anybody is, but you know, it's there if anybody decides they want it after all. So, and, and I will 
close the form probably tomorrow at 1130 or so, and then start giving away the books around then. All right, so Antoinette's sister is about, unsurprisingly, Queen Marie Antoinette of France's sister, who was the Queen of Naples. So, bursting with intrigue, adventure, and romance, Antoinette's sister expertly brings to life one of history's most formidable European monarchs, a woman who upended social conventions for the betterment of her people as Queen of Naples and who courageously lived and loved on her own terms. So that came out in January. I think I give it away when it was still a preview. But I've got another one of those. I've also given this one away before, The Yellow Wife by Sadiqwa Johnson. And I think this is, I think I had a colleague who read this and really liked it. Uh, but the description is, born on a plantation in Charles City, Virginia, Phoebe Dolores Brown has lived a relatively sheltered life. Shielded by her mother's position as the estate's medicine woman and cherished by the master's sister, she is set apart from the others on the plantation, belonging to neither world. She'd been promised freedom on her 18th birthday, but instead of the idyllic life she imagined with her true love, Essex Henry, Phoebe is forced to leave the only home she has ever known. She unexpectedly finds herself thrust into the bowels of slavery at the infamous Devil's Half Acre, a jail in Richmond, Virginia, where the enslaved are broken, tortured, and sold every day. There, Phoebe is exposed not just to her jailer's cruelty, but also to the contradictions. To survive, Phoebe will have to outwit him, and she soon faces the ultimate sacrifice. So that's The Yellow Wife. Next up is one, I don't know if I've given this away before. I know I've seen it before. The Bloodless Boy by Robert J. Lloyd. So this is a historical mystery. Part Wolf Hall, part The Name of the Rose, a riveting, a riveting new literary thriller set in Restoration London with a cast of real historical figures set against the actual historical events and intrigues of the returned king and his court. So it's set in London in 1678, which should be interesting because that would also be post-fire, like the big London fire in 1666. Um... So, yeah, probably a really fascinating part of London's history. And then, of course, there's a murder mystery. And also, Herded in a Love Song is our final book by Tracy Garvis Graves. Just catapulting ourselves much farther forward in history. Layla Hilding is 35 and recently divorced. Struggling to break free from the past, her glory days as the lead singer in a band, and a 10-year reunion, a 10-year marriage to a man who never put her first, Layla's newfound independence feels a lot like loneliness. Then there's Josh, the single dad whose daughter attends the elementary school where Layla teaches music. Recently separated, he's still processing the end of his 20-year marriage to his high school sweetheart. He chats with Layla every morning at school and finds himself thinking about her more and more. Equally cautious and confused about dating in a world that favors apps over meeting organically, Layla and Josh decide to be friends with the potential for something more. Sounds sens sensible and way too simple, but when two people are on the rebound, is heartbreaker happiness. That's a, it's heartbreaker happiness. That's a love song away. So this is actually a romance, not historical fiction. But that's called Heard It in a Love Song. If you want any of these four, be sure to give me your contact information on the Google form and enter to win one of them. And I will start giving away books tomorrow. All right. Let's get into today's books. I feel like I'm less rambly this morning. Don't know why. Is it the sleep? It might be the sleep. As we've discussed, Sleepy Lisa is Loopy Lisa. Which is going to happen more often than not. So don't mourn too badly if it's not today. <laughs> I promise you Sleepy Lisa, Sleepy Lisa will be back. Okay. Starting with our rom first romance title, The Wedding Crasher by Mia Sosa. Let me do this real quick. Just weeks away from ditching D.C. for greener pastures, Solange Pereira is roped into helping her wedding planner cousin on a random couple's big day. It's an easy gig until she stumbles upon a situation that convinces her the pair isn't meant to be. What's a true blue romantic to do? Crash the wedding, of course and ensure the unsuspecting groom doesn't make the biggest mistake of his life. Dean Chapman had his future all mapped out. He was about to check off, start a family, and on track to make partner 
when his modern-day marriage of convenience went up in smoke. Then he learns he might not land an assignment that could be his ticket to a promotion unless he has a significant other, and in a moment of panic, Dean claims to be in love with a woman who crashed his wedding. Oops. Now Dean has a whole new item on his to-do list. Beg Solange to be his pretend girlfriend. Solange feels a tiny bit bad about ruining Dean's wedding, so she agrees to play along. Yet as they fake date their way around town, what started as a performance for Dean's colleagues turns into a connection that neither he nor Solange can deny. Their entire romance is a sham. There's no way these polar opposites can fall in love for real, right? This got a starred review from Publishers Weekly. If you're interesting in, interested in The Wedding Crasher, it comes out April 5th. Next up in romance, we have Fool, Fool Me Once by Ashley Winstead. Lee Stone is a 21st century woman. She kicks butt at her job as a communications director at a woman-run electric car company that's better than Tesla, thank you. And after work, she's a stoner, drinking guys under the table and never letting any of them get too comfortable in her bed. It's not what I thought stoner meant, but okay. That's because Lee learned one big lesson, never trust men. After four major heartbreaks set her straight, from her father cheating on her mother, all the way to Ben Lauderman in grad school, who wasn't actually cheating, but she could have sworn he was, so she reciprocated in kind. Then Ben shows up five years later, working as a policy expert for the most liberal governor in Texas history, just as Lee is trying to get a clean energy bill rolling. Things get complicated and competitive as Lee and Ben are forced to work together. Tension builds just as old sparks reignite, fanning the flames for a romantic dust-up the size of Texas. This got a starred review from Kirkus, and if you're interested in Fool Me Once, it comes out April 5th. All right. Funny You Should Ask by, I think, Elisa Sussman or Sussman. It's got to be like, it's got to be one of those two, right? Sussman? 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 Anyway. <laughs> Back then, 20-something writer Shawnee Horowitz was stuck. While her MFA classmates are nabbing book deals, she's in the trenches writing puff pieces. Then she's hired to write a profile of movie star Gabe Parker. The Gabe Parker. Her favorite celebrity crush, the object of her fantasies, the background photo on her phone, who's also just been cast as the new James Bond. It's terrifying and thrilling all at once. Yet, if she can keep her cool and nail the piece, it could be a huge win. Gabe will get good press and her career will skyrocket. But what comes next proves to be life-changing in ways Shawnee never saw coming, as the interview turns into a whirlwind weekend that has the tabloids buzzing. Now, ten years later, after a brutal divorce and a heavy dose of therapy, Shawnee is back in Los Angeles, laser-focused on one thing, her work. But she still spent the better part of the last decade getting asked about her deeply personal Gabe Parker profile at every turn. No matter what new essay collection she's promoting, it always comes back to Gabe. So when his PR team requests that they reunite for a second interview, she wants to say no. She wants to pretend she's forgotten about the time they spent together years ago. But the truth is that those 72 hours are still crystal clear, etched in her memory. And so she says yes. Shawnee knows that facing Gabe again also means facing feelings. She's tried so hard to push away. This got a star review from Kirkus as well. So if you're interested in Funny You Should Ask, it comes out April 12th. All right. Our final romance of the day. Yes, it is our final romance of the day. I'm going to need a little bit of tea. And another last name I'm not certain of. So Part of Your World by Abby. I want to say Jimenez. 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 Yemenis, Yemenis. <laughs> I was probably right the first time, or at least I was probably as close as I'm going to get the first time. At any rate, part of your world. After a wild bet, gourmet grilled cheese sandwich, and a cuddle with a baby goat, Alexis Montgomery has had her world turned upside down. The cause? Daniel Grant, a ridiculously hot carpenter who's 10 years younger than her 
and as casual as they come, the complete opposite of sophisticated city girl Alexis. And yet their chemistry is undeniable. While her ultra-wealthy parents want her to carry on the family legacy of renowned, world-renowned surgeons, Alexis doesn't need glory or fame. She's fine with being a mere ER doctor. And every minute she spends with Daniel and the tight-knit town where he lives, she's discovering just what's really important. Yet letting their relationship become anything more than a short-time term fling would mean turning her back on her family and giving up the opportunity to help thousands of people. Bringing Daniel into her world is impossible, yet she can't just give up the joy she's found with him either. With so many differences between them, how can Alexis possibly choose between her world and his? This got a starred review from Publishers Weekly. So if you're interested in Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, maybe, it comes out April 19th. All right, moving on to the historical fiction. We start with Life Sentences by Billy O'Callaghan. And I'm not positive about that name, but I'm pretty sure about that one. Okay. At just 16, Nancy leaves the small island of Cape Clear for the mainland, the only member of her family to survive the effects of the Great Famine. Finding work in a grand house on the edge of Cork City, she is irrepressibly drawn to the charismatic gardener Michael Egan, sparking a love affair and a devastating chain of events that continues to unfold over three generations. Spanning more than a century, Life Sentences is the unforgettable journey of a family hungry for redemption and determined against all odds to be free. This got starred reviews from both Booklist and Kirkus. So if you're interested in Life Sentences by what they're calling the finest living Irish writer, Billy O'Callaghan, it comes out April 5th. Moving on to something a little more lighthearted. Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus? Garumus? Garmus? Okay, <laughs> moving on. Chemist Elizabeth Zott is not your average woman. In fact, Elizabeth Zott would be the first to point out that there is no such thing as an average woman. But it's the early 1960s, and her all-male team at Hastings Research Institute takes a very unscientific view of equality. Except for one, Calvin L. Evans, the lonely, brilliant, Nobel Prize-nominated grudge holder who falls in love with, of all things, her mind true chemistry results. But like science, life is unpredictable, which is why a few years later, Elizabeth Mott finds herself not only a single mother, but a reluctant star of America's most beloved cooking show, Supper at Six. Elizabeth's unusual approach to cooking, combine one tablespoon acidic acid with a pinch of sodium chloride, proves revolutionary. But as her following grows, not everyone is happy, because as it turns out, Elizabeth Zott isn't just teaching women to cook. She's daring them to change the status quo. Laugh out loud funny, shrewdly observant, and studded with a dazzling cast of supporting characters, Lessons in Chemistry is as original and vibrant as its protagonist. This got a starred review from Kirkus, so if you're interested in Lessons in Chemistry, it comes out April 5th. All right, moving on to Four Treasures of the Sky by Jenny... Dang you, Zhang, I think. Very likely I'm wrong. Anyway. Dayu never wanted to be like the tragic heroine for whom she was named, revered for her beauty and cursed with heartbreak. But when she is kidnapped and smuggled across an ocean from China to America, Dayu must relinquish the home and future she imagined for herself. Over the years that follow, she is forced to keep reinventing herself to survive. From a calligraphy school to a San Francisco brothel to a shop tucked into the Idaho mountains, we follow Dai Yu on a desperate quest to outrun the tragedy that chases her. As anti-Chinese sentiment sweeps across the country in a wave of unimaginable violence, Dai Yu must draw on each of the selves she has been, including the one she wants most to leave behind, in order to finally claim her own name and story. At once a literary tour de force and a groundbreaking work of historical fiction, Four Treasures of the Sky announces Jenny Tiang Zhang as an indelible new voice. Stepped in untold his steeped in untold history and Chinese folklore, this novel is a spellbinding feat. 
This got star reviews from Publishers Weekly and Bookless. So if you're interested in Four Treasures of the Sky, it comes out April 5th. Moving on to our penultimate book, Shadows of Berlin by David R. Gillum. 1955 in New York City. The city of instant coffee, bagels at Cat's Deli, newfangled TVs. But in the Perlman's walk up in Chelsea, the past is as close as the present. Rachel came to Manhattan in a wave of displaced Jews who managed to survive the horrors of war. Her uncle Fritz fleeing with her, Rachel hoped to find freedom from her pain in New York and in the arms of her new husband, Aaron. But this child of Berlin and daughter of an artist cannot seem to outrun her guilt in the role of American housewife, not until she can shed the, the ghosts of her past. And when Uncle Fritz discovers in a dreamy midtown pawn shop the most shocking portrait that her mother ever painted, Rachel's memory, memories begin to terrorize her, forcing her to face the choices she made to stay alive, choices that might be her undoing. From the cafes of war-torn Germany to the frantic drumbeat of 1950s Manhattan, Shadows of Berlin dramatically explores survival, redemption, and the way we learn to love and forgive across impossible divides. This got a starred review from Publishers Weekly. If you're interested in Shadows of Berlin, it comes out April 19th. All right, and our last book of the day is Wing Walkers by Taylor Brown. Wing Walkers is one part adventure, one part love story, and, as is the signature for critically acclaimed author Taylor Brown, one large part American history. The novel braids the adventures of Della and Zeno Marigold, a vagabond couple that funds their journey to the West Coast in the middle of the Great Depression by performing death-defying aerial stunts from town to town, together with the life of the author and thwarted freighter pilot William Faulkner, whom the couple ultimately inspires during a dramatic air show with unexpected consequences for all. Brown has taken a tantalizing tidbit from Faulkner's real life, an evening's chance encounter with two daredevils in New Orleans, and set it aloft in this fabulous novel. With scintillating prose and an action-packed plot, he has captured the true essence of a bygone era and shed a new light on the heart and motivations of one of America's greatest authors. This got star reviews from Library Journal and Booklist, so if you're interested in Wing Walkers, it comes out April 19th. And that is it for our books today. Next week, we're going to talk about science fiction, fantasy, and horror, some of my favorite. Um, I will see you then. It's one week from today. No weird interruptions. Be sure to sign up for the giveaway, and I will see you in a week. Bye.